So we're delighted to welcome Aleda Salas. Aleda is an international SEO consultant. She focuses on personalized, strategic, and technical SEO. And she's going to be bringing us through strategic SEO audits and how we get really actionable information from them and how we can prioritize the results. So over to you, Aleda. Hello, how are you? It's, it's great to be here. Today, I am delighted to be sharing with you a few tips regarding how to make your technical SEO efforts, and not only technical, but also content, and link out it, and any type of, of analysis and, and, and action that you do to optimize and grow your, your uh, organic search performance and status as actionable and meaningful uh, as possible. Since at the end of the day, we are not all have the, the, the unlimited resources and all of the resources that we will love to, right? So I am going to switch and uh, go to my screen now um, so you can take a look at my uh, presso. Let me go here. Here you have. Okay. Now you should be taking a look at my screen. Let me know, please, if it is OK, just to make sure that you are not seeing anything else. Yes? Awesome. Yes, I, I, I see that I can see you. It's good to know that you can see me, but I'll hopefully you also see my screen. <laughs> OK. So I am going to start now. And well, of course, you already know me. Um, you already uh, know that I am an international SEO. I do consultancy for uh, especially multinational and, and international companies. However, I also do consultancies for uh, whether startups that need to grow quickly and, and, and uh, need a lot of traction in order to get even more investment and, and a good user base. And I also like to share and tweet and, and uh, I am doing with you today, right? And also, I do a lot of conferences, and I write for different type of, of uh, SEO blogs out there. So um, the first clarification that I would like to start with is that a lot of people think that an SEO audit equals uh, the typical checklist that we can see around. And don't, don't get me wrong, I, I even myself, I have created checklists to facilitate um, to, to go through different aspects and criteria that we all know are important uh, to make sure that we don't leave anything out from, an, from our analysis and that is okay, that is great. However, it's, it's very, very important that we don't um, think that this is like a full audit. This is the the the, the a, a, everything that we should do and we can do in order to optimize and 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 really do a meaningful work in order to grow our our websites, organic search visibility, rankings, and and performance in general. It's important that we see them as a base and and as a set of criteria that. We know that we should go through, uh, so we don't forget about. But it's definitely not everything, and and it's, it's, it's this is just the framework of what we need to take into consideration to do the actual minimum meaningful work. That is to validate ourselves what matters the most in each case, uh, especially the independence of of our client uh, own. Uh, website characteristics and, and, and audience and business models, right? So it's important that you don't only validate and assess all the areas influencing your site, organics, or search status. We will see that there are a lot of checklists out there and a lot of, of uh, validators um, that quickly take a look at uh, the technical configuration, the credibility and indexability of your site, the, the content relevance, uh, the, the link popularities, and it's great and it's important, it's a must that we have a photography and a status, an initial status, when we start an, oh, an, an audit. So, uh, so I was telling you about the, the, the audits and the checklist, the differences uh, that I believe that are key here, and this, is, this was the screen for that. And then here is where I wanted to share to you different type of, of, of um, areas that we know that are important and we should validate, right? And it's important that we take them into consideration, and it's great. However, 
is also a must that we take into consideration not only our status based on the technical configuration content and links of our own websites, but also our current organic search performance, which is something that we usually do too, but also the potential that there is out there, the, 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 the general industry and audit search behavior that we can target and we should target if, if there's enough opportunity to for us, uh, from a business and from from a search perspective, that is that is relevant towards towards the type of opportunities that we are looking to target, and then also the existing situation versus your competitors. This is this is definitely key because sometimes we only have a photography of our own status, and we don't know how to prioritize certain actions because we don't know how our competition are already leveraging this, and and we don't know if there is a big opportunity or a big competition or not and then what we end up having is a lot of effort and a, of, of, of creating content or optimizing areas of our website that are, won't be meaningful uh, to gain that much uh, visibility or traffic or that is uh, very highly competitive when we could have prioritized other areas that were going to be far less competitive to achieve better results in less time. So it's important, it's important, definitely important. It, it is the key element here to prioritize and target your SEO presses uh, accordingly based on the analysis that we do from all of these areas um, to identify each one's opportunities, uh, each one level of competition, uh, the status of each one, and where it will be much more meaningful for us to start and, and really allocate our resources to see uh, results in a much sooner way. So here are a few questions to make your audit, audits much more strategical and target all of these uh, type of actions that we all know that we need to, to do and we have so many checklists about, but how to really prioritize their outcomes based on our, on our own situations, right? So the first thing is to um, analyze our current organic search performance and you will see how this will be key and uh, understanding our current situation, um, our current rankings, our visibility, how we are getting them, um, which are the queries that we are already ranking with, uh, the clicks, impressions, and position uh, per query per device. And we should here identify which are those queries that we are getting, probably uh, not only those with not a good position, because it means that probably they are not well optimized, right? But also those that even with a great position, with a great rankings, are not getting a good enough click-through rate or are getting a lower click-through rate on mobile than in desktop or vice versa, for example, because this will mean that there's something specific that we can easily fix uh, with this type of, 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 of content and, and, and this targeting this specific query of our website. And to facilitate, facilitate all this, we should go and check um, not only the queries, but the pages that we are getting much more visibility with and the type of, of gaps and metrics that we can have um, uh, not only per device, but also uh, for the different type of areas and to facilitate all this, really, because you can see here, oh my God, I, I hate uh, the different levels of filtering that we, do, we need to go through in Google Search Console to actually get the metrics that we want. For example, here I would like to have all the metrics that the keywords for any of the top pages receiving much more visibility and, 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 and with better rankings per device. Um, we cannot get them right there, like in one single interface. So to facilitate this, we can go to your profiler. We can connect with the Google Search Console API. Um, go check on the search analytics option, and we will get for all of the top pages that may have received much more um, visibility and, uh, in, in the last three months or two months or month, one month per country or per device that we want to select, the specific keywords for each one of them. The same can be done with own page. And with own page that I also like is that we can identify per areas or per categories of a website. Those directories are bringing more organic search visibility along all of these metrics that they they use from, from the Google Search Console. So for example, it's not only which are the two pages in general and for which terms that are not really performing well 
or, or are performing well but are not really um, getting the type of, of clicks and performance that we were we will be ex expecting because they are not really optimizing really well uh, for them. Uh, but also, we can identify uh, per a category basis. Which are these categories of my website uh, that um, are really bringing much more uh, visibility or that are ranking with more keywords, but they are getting less clicks. So it is very likely that these keywords are not performing in the best possible way and have a low uh, average position. And if they have a high average position but a low click to rate, that, that, that maybe they are not shown in the right way in the SERPs or there is an issue with their specific content, right? And before uh, we go through, because this will be the typical analysis, right, that we do, and we will go right ahead and, and based on this specific information that we already have gotten, we can say, okay, let's let's crawl the website now, let's, let's analyze my incoming link, uh, popularity and let's start um, trying to improve what we already have. But before doing that, it's important that we take a look um, the, the what's the gap with, with our competitors. And I love this view of SEMrush, um, which is the, the, the comparison per domain, because here we can identify very well and easily if our competitors are maybe getting much more visibility not only because they are necessarily like um, attracting more uh, rankings with high a higher level of, of 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 keywords, but maybe because they have a much better rankings with these keywords, and maybe this the, the the volume of keywords is even less, which is the case here in the example with um with uh, Pure Gym that has more traffic with less terms. So are they targeting more? more volume or has they have better rankings? This is, uh, this is the key question, right? Um, and, and it's important to identify our opportunities. Sometimes, and, and a lot of times here, I have gotten and started a, um, a, a process with a website that is huge, that is, that, is, that is so, so, so big. So it's very, very important to have this into consideration because we can see if it is really about a long tail type of approach if, or if it is really about uh, capitalizing on those queries that they are already ranking well, that they, they are maybe on top 20 position, uh, but they need to be pushed on the top 5 position. And, and that will make the whole difference because they are targeting maybe three times more uh, keywords with half of the traffic from these keywords, right? So it really gives you the opportunity if it is about that they are ranking maybe not the, the, the right keywords, maybe they are targeting the, the, the keywords that have less uh, search volume or that these keywords are not necessarily ranking well. And the best way to identify specifically these keywords is with the domain versus domain um, comparison of, of SEMrush that you can see right there. So you, you will see rather quickly uh, which are these terms that your competitors are ranking and you are still not ranking or you are not both ranking yet. Well, that maybe you are both ranking top 50 for this type of queries that may have a high, so high search volume, and so you identify the opportunity and you want to prioritize to target this type of terms because of this. And then you can also verify the, the pages that your competitors are getting this visibility with, that are capitalizing moves to bring this, this organic search traffic. You go to the page um, report and you get all of these two pages that they are they are receiving traffic with, and then the, the main question here should be: Are you already targeting this type of pages? Do, do, do you already have your own areas targeting this this same type of content? Are you already competing with this same content like this? The content might be less or better optimized, which is okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's not because they are already more or less ranking better than you. That means that they are already uh, better optimized. But the key should be, are you already even targeting this type of, of, of content or featuring this type of content? And with all of this information is that you will be able to already identify and validate and ask some questions um, to prioritize your SEO actions targeting once that you start implementing. Um, prioritize those pages that your competition is already leveraging 
to, 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 to get top organic visibility and traffic. There's, if, if it is really easy, easy for you to really enable this, this content and, and target this content, it's also meaningful from a business perspective, so there's no reason for you to not do so. Um, which are two pages that both you are and, and your competitors um, are, are not ranking well with high search volume. So start doing it better and prioritize these two pages when you are optimizing them uh, later to target the right keywords on their other titles, meta descriptions, the content. Uh, which are two queries that you're still not ranking well but you already, already have content for? Um, that is unforgivable, and, and, and this should be a really low hanging fruit. Uh, you already have the page, you already have the content, but it's about optimizing it better. Identify which are those areas, which are those, those, those segmentations and, and, and those groups of queries. Um, which are the two queries that your competitors are already ranking well uh, for, but you are not yet, and those that you are already ranking well. But you have a low click, low click through rate, so it should be something about the way that these are shown in the SERPs. Maybe because um, this, there are top competitors uh, that are ranking maybe only one position above you, but that have a much more optimized way to show them in, 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 in the SERPs. Maybe showing them with some SERP functionality, some rich snippets that you're still not showing, for example. It's important that you validate and you prioritize these actions and, and, and analysis in, 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 in your audits to really optimize and, and drive much more growth easily like this. And which are those top, per, those top queries uh, per device that you're still not leveraging with specifically relevant content and that will that will be easy to create. That really, there, there should be some content for you. There's a functionality that you're still not providing on mobile that you can identify that your mobile audience is looking for uh, specifically. And once that you already answer all of these very fundamental questions regarding your current situation, it's time to assess the potential out there and the gap that you have with this potential versus your own status and your competi competition status. And the, here, here is a little bit of an exercise of, of, of doing what you should actually do with the typical keyword research, but also validate well how you are already targeting it and, and prioritize all this to, to implement your SEO actions later. So what, what additional queries do your act, uh, audience have? Uh, that you're still not targeting at all. Expand for category location characteristics. And I love here the, the keyword magic functionality of, of SEMrush because, again, they segment for all of the type of, of, of um, permutations and, and, and modifiers. Uh, and you can actually include there uh, a minimum level of, of volume and keyword difficulty that you want to target. And also, which is even more important. Um, besides the typical generic type of, of, of uh, volume opportunities, the, the difficulty that you can already identify from here, and the type of features that each one of these queries are showing in the organic search result that you can at some point even target and profit from to improve your visibility. And also, don't not only take a look at the current photography, at the current situation or status, but also take a look at what happened in the past. Go to your competitors' um, position changes and verify uh, which were the keywords and the queries that they used to rank with, but they are not ranking with anymore. That they are still that they are not still uh, targeting and profiting from because these are some terms that are highly likely also relevant for you and um, you would like to maybe identify the opportunity for them and if the search volume is high enough and, and these are also relevant for you, you want to take them also into consideration in your analysis. And also, let's, let's take the opportunity to validate quickly here what was what made your, your competition to, lo to lose their, their visibility with this key keywords? What, what, they did, what did happen here? Uh, there was a change of content, web structure, where they penalize, whatever. And once that we have all of these additional terms, potential terms, because it's what our audience in general search for, it's important to validate for even more ideas and expand the, these terms. And, but more importantly, verify with the Google tool itself the search volume and trend over time 
and the, the mobile search share for each one of these groups. Um, so here is, is, is what is key is to verify if this group of terms that you can identify that have a high uh, search trend and, and share for mobile, for example, you already have a mobile version enabled for them, a mobile content. And if not, again, this should be something that you should prioritize. And, and you want to take a look, you may want to take a look which are your competitors that are already making the most out of this. Uh, so I love these tricks because they support mobile filters um, and you can easily do a comparison, you can see here on the, the screen, a comparison of the mobile visibility of your own site versus the one of your competitors and see which are the websites that are really, really, really leveraging and, and growing much more with mobile. Uh, in this case, it's better or the UK, for example. So you want to go and take a look and see which are the specific mobile terms that better.org UK are already leveraging and do the same type of exercise that you did in the past. Um, verifying um, if you, if, what's the gap of your own uh, website versus those one. Uh, if, if there is an easy way for you, if there is a low hanging opportunity for you to enable this type of content or functionalities on your mobile presence to target them. And in general, once that you have all of these groups of keywords and, and, and opportunities and you have segmented that you have identified which are the mobile ones that you should target and you should really rank for. Um, you should identify and verify the, the difficulty for each one of them and how to increase the visibility in case the, 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 the difficulty is high, which is a type of visibility that you can gain with search functionalities. Maybe it's knowledge draft, maybe it's site links, maybe it's local pack if you are a, 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 a local target business. Um, and these questions, again, will likely allow you to prioritize queries with higher growth opportunities. Uh, which are the low media search volume and low difficulty level with the growth trend over time that you may want to target from right now and not wait until they have a high search volume with a high competition? Uh, which are the specific mobile search queries that you're still not targeting with your mobile web presence? Uh, which are the top relevant queries that your competition used to run for but are not targeting anymore, et cetera, et cetera? This queries, these questions that we uh, specified before should help you to prioritize your efforts. And now it's important also to analyze your link profile preferences. And of course, uh, you should not only verify your own link authority, but compare it with your competitors, with the one of your competitors. It's always uh, relative, it's not absolute. Identify is a, a link volume or popularity matter here. Which website are linking to your competitors that are still not linking to you? Commit of SEO makes this so easy to identify. Uh, do their unique links coincide with the ones of, of higher authority? Maybe you should go for this with higher authorities. And which pages are getting more links to your competitors versus your own site? Uh, compare the ones that are really ranking well for them, are getting much more traffic, and see if there's a coincidence, if there's a co correlation of those two pages that they are getting traffic with, with those that have they have more links for um, and, 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 and see the gap versus your own ones and what type of sites are providing more links to your competitors versus your own. Identify the, the share of site wide links, uh, those with high domain influence, links per country, uh, how, how optimized these are uh, versus your own. Uh, yeah. For example, the no-follow versus the follow rate, the, th the text image and redirect links share, the brand versus commercial anchor text, etc. And of course, which are those links that are going uh, to those pages that are already like giving errors from your competitors or from your own side that you want to capitalize and fix right away and, and prioritize right away. And if you identify that your competitors, again, have a lot of links that are going to pages that are showing errors, you want to prioritize this. Uh, to outreach and to capitalize from. And, and the idea should be that with all of this analysis and criteria that you identified in the usual link audit, you ask yourself, um, if, if your current ranking status is better than your competition and, and you have even more links than them. So it's, it's obvious that it's not a matter of link volume or diversity, but it's some, that you, sh you, you, you will be able to, to uh, really like start by focusing on high authority links and, and some identified characteristics that you may have identified that you lack from, but of course it's not going to be the top priority, the, the link volume, because there's 
there's the gap there. There's you, you, you are above your competition in it, and it's not something that is a game changer on your own rankings right now. However, if your um, external links are less and your competition is lower, then of course you will need to prioritize on those with a higher volume and diversity, and then also with those that are really highly targeted for these queries and pages that you really have identified before that have a much more query opportunity and profitability. And, and this will help you really greatly to prioritize drilling building and target drilling building approach to make it much more meaningful and targeted to increase your own rankings and to increase the opportunities that you have already identified in the past. And last but not least, um, how you're optimizing your pages from a technical and conduct perspective for those priority queries. You have seen how links should be targeted for to, to, to make the most target these queries that we have identified in the past and to make it matter most for these pages uh, and independence of our current rankings. So it's the same here. When we crawl our website, it's verify if this non-indexable redirected canonicalized blocked or error pages coincide with those that you should use to target these highest potential queries that you identify in the past. Um, I am so it makes me so sad, and I'm a, I am a little bit sick when when, when uh, I see audits that they provide the examples for for pages of the blog or pages of of really obscure areas of the website that are not really popular, are not really meaningful towards growth. So it's important that you prior, prioritize the, the audit and the analysis and the validation of of those areas and and verify if these errors or these issues coincide with those areas and categories and, 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 and landing pages that should be really getting the organic search visibility and traffic for, for your website. Not all pages matters in the same way. So it's important that you prioritize those that are more meaningful. The same with the content relevance. Now that you know and now that you, 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 you really have the, these top targeted queries that you should focus on because you know that they will be much more profitable, go and validate the pages. Uh, and, and prioritize the analysis from a content relevance for those pages that should target these queries. I mean, it's, it's okay to configure well, of course, your paginations from 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 certain areas of your blog, for example, or I don't know, the about us section or the support section, whatever. But start with these uh, transactional, much more meaningful pages that will give you the rankings that you expect for your business at the beginning. Then, of course, SEO is about having a recursive uh, process that will grow over time and will be expanded and optimized over time. And you can expand your optimizations toward these other less meaningful areas from a business perspective. But start validating the, the title duplication, uh, the, the content duplication, uh, meta description optimization, uh, title keyword targeting for these pages that you know that are much more important. And if you are not sure if you should really start indexing some areas, this is a typical question, right? Okay, Alain, I, I have identified that I have enough search volume, potential search volumes and queries towards this specific area, but I don't know if I should target it. Um, I, I don't know if I will get in trouble because there's like that really, that's maybe I'm showing too much of a content duplication here for, for, for them, not unique, enough unique content, right? So it's, it's about following this flowchart. Should I index, index for a specific facet page? Uh, so does your audience search using spe uh, specifically relevant facet targeted queries for it? If not, then don't index it. And, and is the search volume for, it, um, for these specific queries uh, high enough to compensate the effort of, of indexing these pages? If not, don't index it. Uh, but if it is enough, and the audience really use this type of queries, you should validate if there's enough content to generate a, a really meaningful, relevant uh, content uh, offering and, and, and a good user experience with, with a specific information targeting them. And if the answer is yes, then you should definitely index and profit and capitalize on them. And then instead of trying to uh, follow, like, a generic pattern to index or no index, uh, you can definitely take this into consideration to capitalize on those and, uh, and those queries that matter the most and will bring you the, the, the highest value. And by following these questions and, and this process, 
Hopefully your audits will be much more meaningful. It's about really asking the right questions. And then the actions that we all do, the validations that we all do, are really targeted to make the most out of each one of them. Uh, so like this is that we are going to be able to drive the highest growth and to profit the most from each one of these opportunities. Thank you. Do, you. do you have any questions? Thanks a million for all of that, Elena. Really, really actionable advice there. So thank you so much for sharing. There's a couple of questions that have got a bit of traction there in the chat. Um, one in particular about avoiding server downtime that we might ask you to jump on in the chat window if we can. And we yeah, just sure jump thing. over.